Hello everyone, my name is Zipt, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please do subscribe and don't forget to leave a like. Today, I'm going to be showing you an interesting way to programmatically crash any Windows PC using a small amount of C++ code. First, I'm gonna demonstrate it for you here in a second, and then if you're interested for the explanation as to how it works, you can stick around for the end where I will do that. The code for this is in the description uh, as a pastebin link for those curious. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it though. I provide no guarantee this is safe for your computer. It could damage your hardware. I'm not sure, uh, but there it is anyways, if you're curious. So let's take a look at it in action here. So I'm just gonna run the program hitting F5. It's gonna go ahead and compile. It does take a few seconds, uh, but once it's done running, it blue screens your computer and says there's a problem, needs to restart. And um, yeah, at this point, you just have to wait for your computer to restart. It's pretty much unrecoverable. Now that we've seen the code in action, let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how it works. So uh, at the top here of our file, we're just basically importing the Windows and Winternal uh, header files. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, we're doing some definitions here. I'll explain what these are in a bit. And then what we're doing here is we're type def something called pdef rtl adjust privilege and the return type nt status and it's going to take in some arguments and then we do the same thing again with slightly different stuff so why are we doing um these type defs up here i'm going to skip ahead and then it'll make a bit more sense why we're doing that so we're basically importing two undocumented functions from a library called ntdll.dll so these are not officially documented. There is some documentation on an unofficial site, um, which is how people were able to get this to work basically. So what we're doing is we're declaring LP void. Uh, LP just means a long pointer. So just a pointer uh, to void, meaning that we're not gonna define the type of function just yet, the data type. So we're just getting a pointer basically. We're calling it LP func address one, and we're just getting uh, the basically the address from the NTDLL and we're looking for the function called RTL adjust privilege. We're then doing the same thing for NT raise hard error. And these are the two functions we're going to need to crash windows basically, or, or get that be sawed. All right. So now that we've done that, we're going to, we've got pointers to these functions, right? But these, these pointers are not actually callable functions. We need to basically tell our current instance, our own current, you know, C++ program, what these functions look like. And then we can turn those pointers into something useful. So down here, we're creating a function of the type RTL adjust privilege. And we're basically casting the address that we got into that function type. What is that function type you might ask? That's what we define up here. The return type of this function is NT status. And then it does also take some parameters we'll be messing around with later. I'll explain these as we go ahead. So that's for adjust privilege. And then we have raise hard error. So this also um, returns NT status and takes in some different parameters. All right, now that we've basically got these, these functions, so we've turned these pointers into callable functions using our function definitions, right? So now we can basically just go ahead and call these functions. So we're gonna call RTL adjust privilege. Uh, and basically one of the, the inputs here is the privilege we're looking for, right? What is, what is the target privilege? Um, that is shutdown privilege, which is just an enumeration, essentially um, 19. So we're just raising the current process. Uh, it's privileged to the point where we can shut down the system. That's one thing we're going to do. And then this um, pointer to be enabled uh, is this Boolean right up here that we declared. And we basically just need to store the result of, of calling this function to see did it work or not. Uh, it's just required by the function to do that. Basically, we're not actually using these values. Uh, and the next thing in the, the final step here is we're going to call NT raise hard error and status float multiple folds. You might be wondering, what is that? So let's go ahead and take a look here, go to definition. And you can see here that it's basically just in this list of um, hashtag defines, which basically all it is, is it's different error codes you could pass in. Now, some of these error codes lead to a blue screen of death and some of them don't. So a floating point exception just happens to be one of the, the ones that does actually lead to a, uh, a full system uh, crash or shutdown or blue screen or whatever. Uh, so we're passing that in. Uh, the next three arguments here, number of parameters, Unicode string parameter mask, and actually a pointer to the parameters. Like we're not throwing this in any parameters. We're not explaining actually why uh, there's an exception. We're just saying there's an exception, kill it basically. Uh, and then response option here, 
uh, is option shutdown. So we're basically asking it to shut down, I believe. Now, keep in mind, these functions are officially undocumented. So I'm kind of going off some, you know, potentially sketchy sources. But I do believe that basically we're just asking the system to shut down after that. And then we're also storing that result into this long here, unsigned long response. Again, we're not actually using that for anything. We're just kind of storing it there because we do need to pass in a pointer to store that data somewhere as required by the function. Yeah, so that's basically why this, um, you know, program does that. And as I said, the program will be in the description, uh, the paste bin link. If you are really curious to run it, sure. But if your computer breaks or something, don't come to me. I'm warning you, you shouldn't run this probably. All right. I have no idea uh, if there's any bad side effects to doing this. I just did it for science, but you're kind of at a zoo right now. You should be watching the animals, not getting in the, uh, in the zoo cage, essentially. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I would recommend subscribing to me. I post some pretty cool stuff sometimes, even though I just started this channel, I've got big plans. And uh, yeah, if you leave a like and a comment, that really helps me out for the YouTube algorithm and all that stuff. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. See ya.